Headquartered in Tokyo and operating in more than 50 countries, NTT Data is a leading global IT services provider. NTT Data delivers proven expertise and a cutting-edge cybersecurity portfolio, serving as your trusted advisor, guiding your business toward secure transformation. Using their extensive insurance expertise, they deliver cybersecurity solutions from security analyses and compliance consulting to incident response, forensic analysis up to fully fledged security operation centers for you and your policyholders. Watch real world examples of cybersecurity incidents and learn how they helped our customers to respond quickly, compliantly, and cost efficiently. Next on stage, NTT Data. Hello, my name is Christian Koch. Um, I run business development and innovations for NT data for cybersecurity. And today we've seen a lot of very innovative topics, presentations that tell you a lot of fancy things that you can do in insurance uh, industry. And I think cybersecurity is a very important topic as well. Why do I think this? When we talk about cybersecurity and cybersecurity incidents, it could be that you as an insurance are hit by an attacker. Or if you sell cybersecurity insurance policies to your customers, it is very important that you have a good understanding what does it mean when a customer of you are hit by an attack, or what can you do to reduce your risk and to support your customers in the best way so that the damage will be less than without being prepared for a cybersecurity incident. When we talk about this topic, then um, there are normally three types of motivations for attackers to attack a company. The first one, and this is typically a common one that you see in small companies as well as in big ones, is a typical attack with a ransomware where a lot of data are encrypted, where data exfiltration takes place, and on the other hand, the customer is forced to pay or he will lose the data and also uh, the data will be published. This is a typical scenario that we see in many customer uh, cases. That means especially when we talk about mid-range customers that maybe have an insurance for cybersecurity, they are really worried about a ransomware attack. When we talk to bigger ones, like for example pharma on, uh, companies, then these guys say, okay, we are pretty good prepared. For us, the main topic is that our intellectual property is stolen, for example, for some um, typical medical stuff where you spend millions and billions over years to develop your own products. The last one, sabotage, is a typical topic for customers that produce items that have issues with their reputation in case something went wrong. Just an example, if you produce a car, and you have to call back uh, hundreds of thousands of cars because of some issues, then it will cost you a lot of reputation from your customers. And so you can see there are many cases that customers are interested in, that your customers are interested in, and where your customers try to use insurances to get rid of this risk. So what do I want to do in the next couple of minutes? I want to tell you a typical example how an attack takes place and I will use an example that we had last year. It was a customer attack, a mid-range company, about 40,000 uh, employees, about 300 sites globally producing many things, many production sites. And what did they do in the past? They built up security uh, um, governance framework, they implemented measures, but at the end, the attack was successful. The question is why? And what is the impact for their insurance? Because they had an insurance. And what could you do um, when you are the insurer to identify is this a company with a high risk or a low risk? So let me have a look to the typical things that happening. The attack took place in a way where I think that most of the people that are in the room would click on this link, because what was happening? We had a conversation that you um, were sending between another company and yourself over several months. For example, when you work with a marketing agency, you know these guys, you trust them, 
you worked them with them for months. And if you get an email from them, oh, by the way, I forgot to send you the meeting minutes from our last meeting um, four weeks ago, please um, find it attached, then of course you will click on the link, you will click on the attachment, of course you know this guy. And this was a typical situation that we've seen there, and uh, the customer did a lot of um, security awareness trainings for their people, but this is a typical situation where the trust is higher than the, the issue that uh, um, employees see when they got this email. Of course, they know the guy that was sending the email. And this is a situation which is a pretty high, a pretty, pretty uh, difficult for, uh, risk calculation. Of course, trust is an, a very important topic, and attacker knows this, and attacker will play with this game. So what was happening? The guy clicked on the email, the email was open, and then the initial attack took place. The interesting thing is, when you look at the timeline, the conversation that was used was a couple of months ago before the uh, real attack starts. And um, so you can see that the attacker tried to get this information, maybe they attacked also the smaller companies to get this um, yeah, email flows at the end to be prepared. And this is a very important topic. Attackers work in a very professional way. They are structured like a company. They have their junior attackers, they have some senior guys, they have some help desk guys. They are really structured and try to be efficient. And this is a topic that you have to have in mind when you also calculate risk and insurance policies on this. So, what happens after this initial infection? You can see it was the 22nd of June last year. And then all the other tasks started pretty quickly. You can see some logins. You can also see some execution of hacking files. It's the, the second point, uh, the Mimidump. Mimikatz is a typical hacking tool. And the funny thing was, the customer had a security operation center. And these guys detected something strange happening. And if you're insurance and you just uh, send over a questionnaire to them, do you have a, do you have a SOC, um, do you have processes in place, they would answer everything with yes. But what you will not see is what is the level, the skill level of the people that are sitting there and doing their daily work. And what's happening at this time, there was a guy sitting there detecting, okay, there was an attacking tool found, and yeah, what do you do? They just opened an internal ticket to the server team. Could you please double check what's going on? If you see this as a security specialist, you say, if you identify this topic, this is the worst thing that you could happen in your network. Of course, exactly at this case, the attacker has access to all of the data in your network. And this is the typical thing where you need professional skills for uh, running these type of services and uh, identifying the criticality. It's also a very important topic for insurance companies that you say, okay, do you do anything internally or do you have specialized external companies, for example, that take care of these services? Then data exfiltration started. Why did it do the data exfiltration? The attackers want to get the data. They want to yeah, use it um, yeah, to put more pressure on the payment. And if you do not pay, they will put the data on the darknet so that everybody can access uh, this data. And at the end, you have also a data privacy issue. It can cost you a lot of money, depending where you are in the world. So then many other tasks started. With the uh, customers also able to identify unnormal behavior in step seven. What did they do? Nothing. They identified it, but they were not trained to, um, to start a process to prevent this detection. And then they were also set up a lot of other communication steps, and I do not want to go in detail, but it's pretty technical there, um, where they set up a persistent communication, and then at the end, everything from an attacker perspective was prepared to start the encryption with the ransomware. 
zone. This was the next step. You can also see uh, logins, and then the encryption started. And at this time, the customer really um, identified that there is a high critical issue in the network. But at this time, it was too late. Everything was encrypted. And the encryption is pretty fast. And what did they do? They said, OK, let's stop the uh, connection to all the other sites. Shut down SD1. Normally, it's a good idea, but the attacker noticed as well. They implemented some scheduled tasks that run a bit later to encrypt all the sites side by side without having connectivity to, to central sites. And this really shows the criticality. And this really shows that you have to be prepared. Of course, when the encryption started, you, um, many, there are not many things that you can do. And the typical question, also from an insurance perspective, is what can you do to stop an attack much earlier, to identify an attack much earlier? And I highlighted a couple of points where you can really see, OK, in this case, it was possible to, uh, to identify a tech. It was possible to stop it. It was possible to block communication and to reduce the risk and later damage. For this customer, um, each day cost about 10 million as damage globally for all of their sites. And if you're an insurer and you have to pay for this, then I think it's very important to speed everything up. And this is a typical topic where we can help, where we can combine some services. For example, when you do um, cybersecurity insurance, that we provide additional services globally to get everything up and running much faster. Of course, what are the typical things? And these are uh, typical examples where customers are not aware of. Just give an example. When you talk to um, your internal IT, or to some customer's IT or send them a questionnaire, are you prepared? Do you have business continuity plans? Most of the guys would say, yes, we have. Do they really help in case of a ransomware attack? Most of them, they do not help. And what is the reason for this? These approaches where you define what are the typical attacks and what can I do to get everything up and running in case of an um, um, uh, yeah, and business outage, then you, add, you uh, write these business continuity plans and disaster recovery plans for single systems, for single sites, but a complete encryption of your infrastructure is not in scope. Nobody had this in mind before. Next thing is, when you talk about some recovery tasks, do you have hardware where you maybe do some backups Sounds easy, but it isn't. Of course, if you call the police, you have some forensic guys on site, they just block doing a restore on the existing hardware. They say, we need this for investigation, and you cannot keep, get back to normal mode of operation. And this is a typical example that really shows being prepared is important, and we as Entity Data, um, we have our yeah, recovery ran. You can also see it outside of this, um, this um, speaking area, um, where we can come on site in case the customer calls us or in case a cybersecurity insurance um, involves us to be faster up and running, to have a rapid restore, being prepared, providing hardware, providing manpower as well. Because at the end, you do need normally more people that the customer normally has in their IT department. Because you have to set everything up in a very quick way. You have to speed everything up and so on. And this is a typical thing where we uh, could support as entity data. Just to summarize, what are typical steps? Of course, you need crisis response, because at the end, everything is in panic mode. You need clear structures so that everything could be back up and running in a rapid and a pretty quick time and then we have a rapid restore at the end and uh, also a setup of everything so that the damage that you have to pay as a cybersecurity insurer is less than without the service. Of course, just to summarize, 
when you talk to customers, what does it mean? Was it, had you had a good feeling during the cybersecurity incident? And normal answer is, it was worse than we ever expected. And this is the truth. Nobody is normally prepared without the training. Training is very important on this. And these are typical samples where you as an insurer can also support your customers. Because if they are prepared, your risk will be lower than without the preparation. And then the police costs uh, for the cybersecurity insurance police could also be less. Because you can calculate it in a better way, in an easier way. And this would be a typical thing that I would highlight. Help your customers with your policies being prepared. Of course, it's not just a support that you can give them, it's also a reducing of the risk for you as an insurance company. Thank you very much.